Good morning and welcome to worship. Um, I'm going to give you just a second or two, uh, one to read the welcome today. Uh, this month in September, we're doing something that not all churches are doing and we are doing a season of creation. And today we're celebrating Storm Sunday. So you can read in the bulletin um, at the top of page two a little bit about that. And I also want to give us um, just a couple moments of silence to remember that it is 9-11 and it was 21 years ago that we suffered quite the tragedy in the United States. Please rise as you are able. Everything you need is in the bulletin. And um, if it seems confusing on what's on the front and what's on the back, that's because these are uh, printed for people who are not doing a season of creation. But we want to be good stewards and use what we have already. So in the name of God, present in the thunder of the storm, the name of Christ, present in the stillness after the storm, and the name of the Spirit, present in the winds of the storm. Amen. Holy, 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 the earth is filled with God's presence. Christ, as we come to, into the sanctuary today, we enter your presence even in the storm. Holy, 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 Earth is filled with your presence. Our opening hymn is Earth and All Stars, number 731 in the Red Book, and we will sing verses 1, 2, and 5. We celebrate with creation as worship leaders from different points in the church, calling out to the elements of the storm to worship with us as we remember our experiences and our questions about fierce storm. We invite the elements of the storm to worship with us. The wild winds and the dark clouds, the lightning flash and the thunder roll. We invite the hurricane to join us in wonder 
the fierce gales and blinding rains, the crashing waves and swaying trees. But with our invitation, there are questions. Where is our God in all of this? Where is our God in the storm? Where is our God in the cyclone? Spinning the wind from heaven above or present where the spiral hits the ground? Where is our God in the hurricane? Sending forth wild winds and anger or present where the rain strikes the land? Where is our God in the tsunami? Forcing a wall of water onto the shore or present with the victims left on the sand? Yes, where is our God in all of this? Where is our God in the storm? You may have uh, rosemary or sage or mint. Uh, I invite you to be seated, to uh, touch that um, plant, that fragrant symbol, and uh, help it to bring up a special memory of a storm or extreme weather that raised questions for you. You may be seated. We'll continue at the bottom of page one. We invite the elements of the storm to worship with us. The wild winds and the dark clouds, the lightning flash and the thunder roll. We invite the hurricane to join us in wonder. The fair sea winds, crashing waves, swaying trees. Sorry, I've... we will now uh, continue on page two. <laughs> We remember fierce storms in our lives, moments when we raised questions about God's role in our world. We remember asking why, where was our God in all of this? And as we hold those symbols aloft, we remember and confess our doubts. We have doubted God's goodness. We have doubted God's purpose when hurricanes and flash floods have hit. We have doubted God's presence in the aftermath of human suffering. We are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. We have doubted. We are sorry. Christ hears your confession, forgives your sins, and answers your doubts. Christ, assure us of your purpose your goodness and your love. I speak for Christ. Your God is not high in heaven playing wild games with nature. Your God is deep within each storm, feeling its power and awe. Your God is the suffering God revealed as such at Calvary and suffering with all who suffer in the aftermath of storms. Shalom, shalom. God too suffers in our storms. Let us pray together. God, our creator, as we face the storms of this world, we celebrate the wonders of the wind and the weather. Help us to see your presence, not only in the forces of nature, but also among those who suffer from natural disasters. Teach us to recognize that your wisdom is embedded in all natural forces, a wisdom that guides, 
controls and limits them. In the name of Christ, who is the wisdom of God, renewing all things in creation. Amen. Is this good? The first reading is from Job, chapter 28, verses 20 to 22. Where then does wisdom come from? Where does understanding dwell? It is hidden from the eyes of every living thing, concealed even from the birds of the sky. Instruction and death say, only a rumor of it has reached our ears. God understands the way to it. And he alone knows where it dwells. For he views the ends of the earth and sees everything under the heavens. When he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters, when he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm, then he looked at wisdom and appraised it. He confirmed it and tested it. This ends the first lesson. We will read responsibly Psalm 20. On page four. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The Lord is a holy. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 21 to 31. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him, God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. Brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. God chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things, and the things that are not, to nullify the things that are, so that no one may boast before him. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus, who has become for us wisdom from God, that is, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Word of God. since we kind of already talked about storms, right? We didn't really have much experience in storms, which is a good thing. So let's just say a prayer. How about that? Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, God, for sending storms to make us see just how important rain is for us, for the animals, and everything on planet Earth. Amen. Please rise as you are able. Get it all set up, and then I close the Bible. This is the Gospel of the Lord according to St. Luke, the 8th chapter, starting at verse 22. One day Jesus got into a boat with his disciples and he said to them, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they put out and while they were sailing, Jesus fell asleep. A windstorm swept down on the lake and the boat was filling with water and they were in danger. They went to him and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he woke up and rebuked the wind and the raging waves. They ceased, and there was a calm. He said to them, Where is your faith? They were afraid and amazed. And said to one another, Who then is this that he commands even the winds and the water? They obey him. Gospel of the Lord, you may be seated. We don't get a lot of rain here in the summer, uh, but we know that there are places that do. Um, and I lived in Houston for a while and saw some really horrible storms, including surviving Hurricane Alicia in 1983. But with hurricanes, there's a big lead up. There's storm tracking on every news show and even the paper bags at the grocery store had a grid on them that you or the map so you could plot the coordinates as the storm was coming. Grocery store shelves were emptied of water and bread and other basics. People would have time to get flashlights and candles and battery operated radios ready. And even though the actual storm itself might not last that long, you can lose power and water for days, which we did. Often being prepared for a storm makes all the difference but sometimes we're caught in storm unaware, no warning or time to prepare. A few years ago, this happened to me when I was visiting a friend in the Pacific Northwest, which we know gets lots of rain. It's beautiful because of it, but one minute it was beautiful and sunny. Then came a torrential downpour. And of course I didn't have a rain coat or umbrella because I wasn't used to that. Life itself, is full of storms. In our gathering and throughout the service, we acknowledge personal, emotional, spiritual, and physical storms, as well as those storms like hurricanes and tsunamis. And it seemed like in Sacramento in the last two weeks, we've been in a season of heat wave. And then of course there are wildfires. And there are words, these are storms too, like firestorms. And really what's been happening in the last two weeks, I would call not a heat wave, but a heat tsunami. Three years ago, things seemed to be going very well. I was, as many of you know, married, working in a church up in the mountains. But little did I know that within a month, it would all start to crumble. The storm of betrayal and subsequent divorce losing my job as a pastor with no other job in sight was a storm of a loss of identity. And then not too long after that, the storm of the pandemic came to follow. I never would have made it without my faith in God. And you also really find out who loves you when you're in difficult times. We also have storms that involve our bodies, health challenges and injuries, parts of our bodies that don't work quite like they used to. And we have storms in our minds, sometimes mental health issues, and again, don't 
quite work like they used to. And we have storms in our spirit, faith crises and doubts and hurts. When difficult things happen to us, to those we love and care for, it can feel like a storm. But the good news is that God is always here for us, always there in the storm, and that God suffers with us because Christ suffered for us. The disciples in the gospel ask, who is this man who can calm the waves and control the wind? They were terrified of their storm and their faith shaken to the core, thinking that they're actually perishing, save us. And that's exactly what Jesus does. And not just for them and then, but now and for us forever. Our sins are forgiven and we are given eternal life. From the beginning, God created everything and everything had a purpose. Christ existed from the beginning too, but his purpose was not revealed until God realized the only way to save the world was to send his son to die for us. A few years ago, I read this book, Love Big, The Power of Revolutionary Relationships to Heal the World by Rosella Haiti White, who is a Lutheran, uh, theologian, speaker, coach, writer. The book I remember just being phenomenal and begins with the premise that humans have not really accepted fully our interconnectedness with each other and the earth, exactly what we're talking about in the season of creation, that often we value profit and ignore suffering in others. We focus on ourselves and rationalize oppression and violence without accepting our complicity. And this is, has divided us and continues to divide us and leads to chaos. That the fear and hatred makes us turn inward and leads us to believe in scarcity over abundance. Rosella believes, and so do I, that healing is possible and begins with our faith in a loving God who created all things and is the ultimate lover. That with faith, we can enter in relationships with ourselves and each other and what she calls revolutionary relationships that are life-giving, risk-taking, vulnerable, gracious, forgiving, and diverse, and that hold us accountable. This sounds like good storms that I thought about as I was reading and preparing for the sermon. There are storms that are life-giving. We need rain, we need wind, and sometimes we need a little bit bigger of a storm for a wake-up call. She writes, revolutionary relationships give life. And an experience is life-giving when it uplifts your spirit and nurtures joy in your life. We need this in our lives. Unfortunately, we are frequently in relationships that suck life from us. She writes, the most telling sign that you are in a relationship that is not life-giving is if the other person is not interested in their own growth and personal development. People that want to tell you what you're doing wrong, but not examining their own faults. The vulnerability in these relationships is reciprocal and that reciprocal relationships are not transactional like so many things are today. Often when people enter a relationship, they expect something and if they don't get it, they just end the relationship instead of seeing how both parties' needs can be met. It sounds a little bit about how some people look at churches these days. Recognizing our interconnectedness is to recognize we all have storms. We all have wounds. We all need healing. And then to recognize that God is the God of all, creator of all, redeemer or liberator of all, sustainer of all. What would it look like if we came to church, not just to have Jesus calm our own storms, but all storms. And the life-giving relationship we have with God is not just a Sunday-only thing, but a daily, ongoing, reciprocal relationship. To love God is to love others, all others. A big love that is revolutionary and transformative for all. 
love that heals individuals and communities and leads to restoration, healing, and wholeness. Storms can be difficult, but they're easier to handle when we're with others. And of course, we have God as our primary focus. Change can sometimes feel like a storm too, but maybe it could be more like a gentle rain that sometimes change can lead to growth and new things. Knowing that we're not in control, we trust and put our faith in our God. There's a contemporary Christian song called Eye of the Storm by a man named Ryan Seifertson, and he captures this idea in these lyrics. In the eye of the storm, we remain in control, and in the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone, are the anchor when my sails are worn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of storm. Let us close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your presence during our storms. Help us to love ourselves and others. Guide us as you would have us live out the purpose you have designed for our lives and for this community. Amen. Our hymn of the day is number 785, When Peace Like a River, You May Remain Seen.
please rise as you are able. Let us affirm our faith together, and this side is the left, and this side is the right. We believe that God creates all things, renews all things, and celebrates all things. We believe Earth is a sanctuary, a sacred planet filled with God's presence, a home for us to share with our kin. We believe that God became flesh and blood, became a piece of earth, a human being called Christ, who lived and breathed and spoke among us, suffered and died on a cross for all human beings and for all creation. We believe that the risen Jesus is the Christ at the core of creation, reconciling all things to God, renewing all creation, and filling the cosmos. We believe the Spirit renews life in creation, groans in empathy with a suffering creation, and waits for us for the rebirth of creation. We believe that with Christ we will rise, and with Christ we will celebrate a new creation. You may be seated as our usher collects the offering. God, our creator, through your love, you have given us these gifts to share. Accept our offerings as an expression of our deep thanks and our concern for those in need, especially those suffering the effects of natural disasters. With all creation, we bless our creator. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Your people receive mercy and your grace overflows in our lives. Fill your church with faith and love and give understanding hearts to those who work to strengthen our ecumenical and interreligious commitments. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation groans as it suffers the impact of storms and natural disasters, pollution and lack of care. As the seasons change, renew in us the will to protect plants, animals, and habitats. Bless us with bountiful harvests that all may share. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your world is shattered and the nations rage. Remember us in your mercy. Teach wisdom to our elected leaders so that we may know peace in our world, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your children wander homeless and the hungry cry for bread. Seek out those who are lost or lonely, anxious or depressed, or struggling with addiction or illness. Provide for those in any need. As we look at the names on our prayer list, we bring these people before you and ask that you would bless them and those we name before you aloud or in our hearts.
God of grace, hear our prayer. Your work is done in this congregation with our hands, feet, voices, minds, and hearts. Build up the ministries of this community. St. John's Program for Real Change, WIND, Sacramento and River City Food Banks, LSS, Blue Star Moms, and others, that we serve our neighbors and welcome the stranger in your name. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints who have died now rest in your presence, including Queen Elizabeth. Give us thankful hearts for those who have been examples of faith in our lives and receive us with joy when we come to share eternal life with you. Of course, we remember those who perished, 9-11. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please join me in praying the creation prayer. Jesus Christ, teach us to empathize with earth. Make our spirits sensitive to the cries of creation. Cries for justice from the air, the clouds, and the sky. Cries of our fellow creatures deserted and dying. Jesus Christ, make our faith sensitive to the groans of the spirit in creation groans of longing for a new creation. Jesus Christ, make our hearts sensitive to the songs of our kin, songs of celebration echoing around us. Christ, teach us to care. Amen. Please rise as you are able. The creator be with you and all creation. Open your hearts. Let us give thanks to our creator. It is right to give you thanks, loving creator. Your word is the impulse for all things to be, for stars and space and stardust to appear, for earth to emerge from the deep, for life to be born of earth and for humans to be born of earth and the spirit. You chose to be born a human being to become a part of earth, to suffer, die, and rise from death, to redeem humankind, renew creation, and affirm all born of earth and spirit. Your presence is the living impulse in all things, the Christ deep among us, filling earth, land, sea, and air, filling every element and place, filling the grain and the grape we share with you this day. Therefore, with angels and archangels, ancient voices in the forest, high voices from the sky, deep voices from the sea, and the whole company of creation, we proclaim your presence among us. Holy, 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 God of all life, earth and sea and sky are full of your presence, and glorify your name. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. That's on page 10. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Come to the table, for all things are now ready. Come to the table with all your kin and share with all in need. The gift of healing for those in pain, the gift of forgiveness for those in sin, the gift of assurance for those in doubt, and the gift of hope for those in tears. May we share these gifts, share Christ with one another and all our kin. You may be seated and you'll be directed to communion.
continue on page 11. Let us give thanks for this meal. We thank you, Christ, for the meal we have celebrated with you. And we pray that through your body and blood, we may be healed and become agents of healing for earth and sea. Amen. And may the spirit of God blowing in the wind fill you with the knowledge of God's wisdom in earth and the pulsing of Christ within you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our sending hymn is Spirit of Gentleness, number 396.
First of all, um, in our opportunities for ministry and also announcements, I um, think that we should give Janie a huge round of applause for playing the piano and also for Tam Stoddard filling in. Um, if you haven't heard, starting next Sunday, Michael Glick will be our regular pianist. So we will um, have new music. Also next week uh, seems to be a time of um, vacation for some of us. So uh, Michael will start on the piano. Janie won't be here. I won't be here. I'm going to a preaching conference called Nevertheless She Preached in Austin, Texas, which I'm excited about because it's a great conference. I've been to it online and now I get to go in person. And for those of you who don't know, I went to school at University of Texas, so I'm a big Longhorn fan, despite their loss to Bama yesterday, but it was only by one point, so did a good job. <sighs> Heartbreaking, but anyways. Um, and Kevin and Ken are out of town, and who knows who else will be out of town. But Laura and Sue will be giving us the message for Fauna Sunday. Um, Please keep in prayers Julie Nemus, who was going to um, fill in as preacher next week, but is still suffering from the effects of her concussion and brain injury that she had from riding um, the Amtrak train. So that's um, very serious, and we're glad to see May here. Um, her son is doing a little better, May. Okay. Okay, so he had had uh, surgery for brain tumor, was almost out of the hospital or was out, but then had a setback and had to go back in, but he's out now and uh, back home. So we give thanks and gratitude for those answered prayers. A uh, couple things. Also today, in the many things that are happening around um, the world, uh, it's um, in the ELCA and our denomination, it's God work, God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. We didn't have anything in particular planned, um, but Bethel in Roseville has invited us to help them uh, package meals up for Rise Against Hunger, and um, we'll have time to get there and have a light lunch if you leave right after the service, which is what I'm gonna do, and um, help them do that. We are continuing on our Bible study of the book of Revelation using the book The Rapture Exposed by Barbara Rossing. Um, we had a great conversation on Wednesday, and if you are not certain or you kind of got behind or whatever, uh, we, we dived into the book a little bit, um, and we'll talk about probably a little bit more about chapter one and start on chapter two, so I ask that you read chapter two, but um, yeah, it's interesting, right, Chuck? Yes, Julie. Yeah. Okay. We had some, yeah. We had a really good discussion, and it's a. I know it's a challenging book, but I know all of you are up to it. That's why I chose it. So um, I think we can continue with that. Um, we are getting ready for our um, yard sale, garage sale. We don't call it garage sale. Anymore. That doesn't sound nice. Um, October first. <laughs> Um, and so we have that, and then the blessing of the animals. Um, so if you're wondering on what's going to happen on October 2nd, we, the proverbial we of those who plan worship, we knew that we would all be very tired after the yard sale on October 2nd. So um, we were going to plan an a cappella hymn sing, but now that Michael is starting with us, we won't have to sing a cappella. So we're gonna have a fun hymn sing on October 2nd. So if there's a song that you've really been missing, um, send me an email or a text or a phone call or Courtney or whoever and let us know. Like, what song are you really missing? I saw an interesting fundraising idea, but I don't think we'll do it this year, But I saw, I can't remember where I saw it, but they actually did a thing where if there was a song you didn't want played, you could pay money for that. <laughs> Maybe next year during stewardship or something, right? So, um, yeah. 
and then our blessing of the animals will be on October 2nd and it's just and then next thing you know it'll be Advent so <laughs> October 9th is the blessing of the animals him saying on October 2nd um we did okay on the blood drive if you saw on the email um they were hopeful that we would have 16 whole blood donations and two what they call power red donations. We didn't get quite that many. I think we had 10, 10 total, but two of those were power red donations by Kurt and myself, which was, um, how did you feel? I mean, I felt okay afterwards, but I was exhausted the next day. No? Okay better man than I am so I and then I followed that up by getting my booster the new booster and my flu shot the day after that that was really fun Friday I was like Bleh. anyways anything else for the good of the order yes Julie there is a birthday today so okay well let's sing uh, Thank you. And thank you for being our reader on your birthday. I think Kevin planned that on purpose. <laughs> so, will you please rise for the dismissal and the sharing of the peace? Christ calls you to be his disciples, to celebrate storms and discern God's wisdom, goodness, and suffering presence in all forces of nature. Holding again those fragrant symbols in our hands. Will you care for creation? We will care for creation. We will be in awe before the storm. We will celebrate God's presence. Go in peace, serving Christ and loving earth. We go in peace, serving Christ and loving our home. And I ask you to share the peace of Christ with each other as you are comfortable. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>